of people are concerned about the future. You know, many people say this crisis is over, happy days are here again and all this. Yet, how many people think that we're going back to normal, that things will be fine again? How many think that things could get much worse for many people? How many people think there could be a major disaster up ahead? Mm -hmm. yeah. So the question here is this, you know, is how do you prepare for it and all this? So we'll leave it to the angel of death, Mike Maloney here. <laughs> As far as, you know, because gold and silver are kind of indicative of the concerns in the marketplace, you know, the, the distrust of fiat money, you know, printed money. They but that's are. why gold and silver is kind of the, the, the canary in the mine, but they're also the bellwether of the emotions, right? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm, because, I'm preparing by getting fully diversified. I buy both gold and silver. <laughs> I also started a business. I sell gold and silver. Yeah. And then I wrote the best-selling book on gold and silver, Rich Dad's Guide to Investing in yeah. Gold and Silver. So when the economy crashes, and, the, and as we predict, the crowds come rushing in to buy gold and silver. Will you be happy or ha sad? I will be celebrating. In every tragedy, there's an opportunity. Right. That's right. And it's, it's, now is the time to try and find what the opportunities are and seize them. Now is the time to, to figure out what is going on in the planet and, and look at why this decade is going to be completely unlike anything that we've ever experienced. Oh, this history. Yeah. World history is changing. Right? Yes, very rapidly. But this has happened before in history, right? This, but never on, on a global scale. scale. Yeah, it's small never scale. Been global. It's never been global like this. Yeah. So it's new. This is going to magnify it a thousand times. So it's history repeating yeah. times a thousand. Yeah. There's two possible extreme or financial concerns. We can either go into a depression or we go to hyperinflation. Which or, is also a depression, hyperinflation. Right, the same as this. Yeah. yeah. But we could also go to war, which is one way to solve, people think we solve the problem. But also what's happening is, you know, in Phoenix, Arizona here, they just announced that uh, they're laying off policemen because they don't have the states don't have any more money. At the same time, they're cutting off unemployment benefits. Now, wow. let's add one plus one together. What does that spell? Crap. Buy a gun. You know, I mean, you got to remember this. Remember this. The police cannot prevent a crime. Only you can do that. They can only investigate it after you're dead. So that's one of the reasons I, I'm preparing. Is you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a former. I'm still a marine in, in my brain. I like guns, and I, the way I'm preparing for it is I've, if I'm prepared for the worst, there's a good chance it won't happen. That is really my philosophy, as sick as it may sound to some people. So come to my house, and I'm armed and dangerous, and I'll welcome you. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but, it, I don't, see, but it's not sick to prepare for the worst. Yeah. I mean, preparing for the worst, it's not, people think we're very negative, you know, and we're very pessimistic. Well, we're kind of pessimistic, saying we do think it's going to get worse, and, but we don't know for sure at this point. But by being preparing for the worst, if it happens, we're prepared. If it doesn't happen, we're smarter. Exactly. Right? What, what, what's the downside? I mean, for me, I'm, I'm, I don't have the gun, so I have to come to Robert for the gun. <laughs> I, I have the food storage, you know, and I look at it from a food storage standpoint, I look at, well, you know, what happens if things don't go bad? Well, I still have the food storage. I'm still prepared, and I don't have to worry, can I feed my family in case you know, business goes under or some other natural disaster and I can't go to the grocery store and, and get have, food. And I have, have both guns and food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to your house. Now, the difference is, is that Robert enjoys the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, tell him the insurance thing. Yeah, it's food. interesting. You, Tom mentioned he has food. I, su I have a, a year's supply of food for my family, blankets, diapers, everything I need I can live for a year. And some people will, you know, kind of poo-poo that and say, well, isn't that a big waste of food? And we, we rotate as best we can. But I'll tell you another thing is it's kind of like buying insurance. If you bought home insurance and your home didn't burn to the ground, would you be disappointed? No. Well, I'm not going to buy insurance because I'll never use it. Well, no, it's like insurance. We hope we never have to use it. Uh, I hope I don't have to use it. But you and I have talked about that a lot, Mike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I now have a stock of food also. And, you know, I don't like guns, but I now own a shotgun and a nine millimeter and <laughs> I, I hope you practice how to use that. Yes, <laughs> I do. Nobody should own a gun without learning how to shoot. Yes. I think in today's market you have to take a defensive strategy and not know what's gonna happen. You know, the 
whoever are the New Orleans Saints won the Super Bowl and they won it by defense. And that's how you have to do it in today's market. You know, credit is tightened throughout the world. It's not just in the U.S. Now China's tightening. Credit card reform is not just in the U.S. And now it's happening in Europe. And then it's happening in South America. So those are things that we have to be prepared for. With the credit tightening around the world, that means it's going to take a long period of time for us to come out of these, the recession and maybe we're in a depression. Right. I personally, Kim and I personally, have, we have food, we have water, we have guns. We have gold and silver. Gold and silver and cash because we don't know which way it's going to go. The point here is this, you know, a, a few years ago, the whole credit card system nearly shut down. Mm -hmm. And when that shuts down, the credit card system shuts down, the world shuts down. You know, forget about oil, forget about gasoline, credit card stop. You're going to see a run for the supermarkets and the supermarkets have less than three days supply. If that whole thing stops, you know, I mean, I have a hard enough time checking out right now. Can you imagine if you've got 9 million other guys trying to check out at the same time? So I just want to avoid the rush if in case it happens. Well, and credit card lines of credit are shutting down because two years ago, there was $5 trillion of credit card lines available. Now it's been cut down to $2.3 trillion. As the banks continue to struggle, the banks continue to tighten the lending, where do they go? They go in the big area of unsecured debt, and they're going to continue to tighten down the credit cards. What do you say from the accountant side of it? Oh, wow. Well, here's, here's something you can absolutely be sure of. Okay, you want to you know what's going to happen in the future. If we're in a depression or if we have hyperinflation, either way, we're going to have increases in taxes. Because what happens with... If you go into a depression, what happens is that you have less and less economic growth. And that means that you have less and less money to pay the current taxes. And so they have to raise the tax rates to offset that. On the other hand, the way all countries are structured in their, in their tax systems, if your income goes up, which it does in a hyperinflation standpoint, your, your actual income goes up high, you get into a higher tax bracket within your country. So either way, what I know for sure is that your tax rate is going up in a depression or in the inflation period. Back to Robert's comment about the police officers. I mean, they're laying off police officers because they don't have enough money. Hence, they got to raise taxes to offset offset those incomes. And they are raising income. taxes now. They've just they've just raised they've just put a new food tax at the mm -hmm. grocery stores. You're now going to get taxed on food because they want to keep a few more police officers. Working. You but you know what pays happening. for those, uh, the police and fire, is real estate tax. Right. And real and estate taxes will have to go up on homeowners. Right. Good. So much for your house being an yeah. asset. When, when the bank owns real estate, they don't pay the tax. <laughs> is that right? That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs>